We really want to know about your, your leadership philosophy and how you, how you motivate your players and how you stop them being distracted by everything that's going on around them. Hmm. So, how long do we have time? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, it's, it's actually um, to take it as normal as possible because at the end it's a football game and um, we all know that. Um, and, and everybody's obviously in the moment very excited about that, but in the end the boys have to perform. And for that you have to, 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 to keep the, the game on the right level. Yes, it's, it's an opportunity. We have pressure. We have pressure a lot of times during the season. We have, pre we have, we have to go to the gem again, qualify for the Champions League, stuff like that. It's all pressure. But now semis, like the quarterfinal already, um, was just an opportunity. It's just really enjoy yourself and, and um, go out there and, and, and play football. That that's, sounds easy and obviously with all the, the things around, it's not that easy. But um, so far we, we did it quite well and that w w should happen again, that we really um, are confident um, and convinced about about us, um, about the style of play, about the things we did so far. Think about the, the journey again, um, let it run through your mind again and, and um, knowing about Hoffenheim, knowing about Middlesbrough when we played here last match day last season when we had to win the game to make sure that we are fourth in the league, then we played against Hoffenheim and all the journey. So it was a big joy for all of us. It was a fantastic ride so far and yeah, we want to continue, of course. But how do you stop your players being distracted by all the noises off or everything that's being written about them and said about them? How do you make sure that they're only listening to you? They're used to that. That's, they're, 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 it's not so important what, what people are talking around. It's, it's, it's important for us because as long as people talk about football, um, the game, we can play the game on that level. But um, in fact, it's not that important. So we are used to having our own opinion about things. So it's, you cannot imagine how often we ignore the things around us um, pretty much constantly because um, we, it's very important for us and it's very important for our fans, but we can, you cannot um, make everybody happy every day. That's, that's not possible, but we can try our best and that's, that's what we really do. And um, so it's, I don't know exactly what, what you mean, to be honest, because it's our normal business. That's what we do all the time, that we really prepare ourselves to be in the best shape we can be and then see it as it is. It's a game. In a game, unfortunately, you can lose. But you know that before the game, so you can try everything to win it. And that's what we do. The different managers in football have obviously had very different approaches. And some, some have players who fear them. Some are very close to their managers. You, you seem to, to be somebody who motivates his team and is, is a very positive voice rather than a fearful character. Is, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think so. So, it, yes, I like to be close to my players because I really um, see us as a, as, a, as a group and I, I can, I have, my job is to help them as good as I can to be perfectly prepared for the game. But in the game, it's like with your sons, you have to let them go, yeah? put off the leash and, and, and run. So that's how it is and um, exactly that, so far that works. That, that's why I always say I'm, I'm responsible for, for um, defeats. The boys are responsible for, for, for the wins and um, that's how we take it. I'm old enough, I can take, all, I can take that responsibility and the boys should really um, enjoy the game. I, I, that's how I see it. There's still, there's still a lot of things in and we, we, we played against West Brom and I was really angry after the game. It felt so unfair and all that stuff and, 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 and I said a lot of things which I wouldn't say again immediately, but I thought all of them. So that's how it is when, I, when you are angry and um, so that's it. But in the moment, and that's a big difference, um, for us it's not normal to be in the semi-finals. And not only because Liverpool was not in the semi-finals, the biggest teams in world football want to have the situation we have now. And um, we are in a good way with the team, with the club, we are really in a good way, but now we have to deliver again and that's the only thing we are thinking about. It's a very difficult game against the other, if you want, outsider in the competition. So but probably everybody thinks the, the, the real final should be Madrid against Bayern. Okay, apart from the Roma and the Liverpool supporters. Um, and so it means one of us will be there and um, yeah, hopefully yeah.
Do you, do you like being the outsider? Is that part I of what draws you to It was most of the time like this. I'm not in the, in the league. We are not very often the outsider. But now in, in Champions League, <coughs> I was I was with work the Dortmund. So how can you be not the outsider with Dortmund in, in that competition with all the experience around and all? So how can you not be the outsider with Liverpool? I don't like it. It's the situation. It's the fact. It doesn't help you or whatever. It's only it doesn't help you to be the favorite. It's only you have the team for it, so you are the favorite. You have the success in the season. So Bayern is. Six times in a row champion in, in Germany. That's pretty um, special. Real Madrid won the competition the last two times. So Rome plays a brilliant season. We play a really good season. So that's it. We are all. We deserve it all to be here. Uh, but it's not about being the outside. It only happens. So you cannot change that. You can still win, and I believe in that. So how do you take a player who's maybe had not such a great match when he's got another big match coming up, and and build him back up? That's again something you cannot do that in the in the four days between two games. You have to you have to create this atmosphere all long before that. So the boys know that they can make mistakes. That's uh, football is a mistake game. So you without mistakes you cannot play it. You have to, the, the only thing is always the reaction in the game already. You lose the ball, try to win it back. You concede a goal, try to score one, and that's all. That's constantly our job. So we are really used to that. The boys are used to that since they are five years old. They had not. They came to Liverpool, which means they did a few things really right in their career. Um, but they had not only sunny days. So there were a lot of um, clouds around um, when they had problems, when when they were younger, um, bad matches, and all that stuff. So we are used to that. But it's uh, the atmosphere is. We, if we make a mistake, we all try to sort it. That's how it is. It's not about as that. a team. One hundred percent, and the boy himself as well. It, it's about the reaction. It's always about the reaction. Life is the best educator for that. Eh? If we only would count um, our bad days, um, that would be a sad life. So we have a lot of good days as well, and um, that's exactly in football like that. It's not about sticking in this cloudy environment. It's about getting out of it again. And uh, we we help each other with that. Of course, we try that with all we have because um, that's how a group should be. Mo Salah obviously has just been named PFA Player of the Year. It's, it's an amazing accolade. And here is a player who really struggled at Chelsea and has blossomed at Liverpool. Well, how have you helped him? Uh, first of all, I, I, he was a kid when he came to Chelsea. So in Chelsea, he had a squad that was un, uh, unbelievable. So it was really difficult. Kevin De Bruyne didn't play in that squad. That, that says a lot. And I think we all agree that um, Jose Mourinho is a fantastic manager. So it's not. Sometimes things are like that. So and then you go. That's exactly what, you, what we were talking about. So it doesn't work. So step aside, try again, and you can still succeed. And that's exactly what happened with Mo. And um, it's a, to be player of the year is already an outstanding achievement, 100%. But to be it in a season with all these other players around, when Kevin De Bruyne is playing the season he played, when David Silva is playing, when Lira Sané is playing all the season, when our boys, Roberto Firmino, Sadio Mane, when they're all playing this kind of season, then it's. Um, it's still a bigger thing. Eh? That was not an easy choice for the people, but obviously it was clear enough because he performed really on high level. But you must share in the in the credit, surely. Share in how? how do you... In in making him the player he's become. That's not. That's my job. There's nothing to do. do some, I don't need uh, any 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 praise for that. That's the job. I have to. I have to make the players help to. Me, I have to help the players that they can be as good as they can be. So that's exactly the same what I try. I try to be the, the, the best manager I can be. And that's what I, what, what's my job with the boys. And, and to create uh, uh, circumstances where they really can show up. That's, that's a job as a manager. It's not only pass from here to there. It's it, because they are already pretty good in passing the ball from point A to point B when they join us. So it's really about that they can make the next step. When a player comes to us, then it's always like this. From that moment on, 50% of the responsibility about his performance is then on my shoulders. That happens immediately. So, and, and obviously, the, it helps the players. But it's mainly the skill of the this, uh, mainly the skills of the players and the skills of the other boys because they make each other better. I mean, he, he's he is um, he's, he is enjoying a particularly special moment and quite an interesting role in football at the moment um, as a you know as an Egyptian as a Muslim. That the songs that people are singing, I'll be I'll be a Muslim. To, I mean, how, how do you feel about all of that? I mean, it's it's, it's fantastic. A, it's, it's a big just, change. It's, it's it's exactly what we need eh, in these times. That's how it is. There's, to see this wonderful young man, full of joy, full of um, love, full of friendship, full of everything, and and um, in a, in a world where 
we all struggle a little bit to 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 understand all the things happening around eh, in this in this um, on this planet. So and it's it's just fantastic. It's fantastic to have him around. Eh? We have the, the typical uh, things before a game. He's uh, he's Muslim and he is doing all the things what Muslims are doing before a game, washing procedures and stuff like that. So we we come a minute or two minutes earlier in the dressing room that he can be ready for the game. Like Sadio, by the way, like Emre Can, by the way, they all do that. So and that they can. Nobody says why we have to be. Now we wait. All that's completely normal in a team, and that's how in an idle world the world would work. Eh? We all try to understand each other and, 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 and deal with all the little bit strange things for the one or the other and um, yeah. When you say these times, do, do you feel that there is a lot to worry about in terms of xenophobia, Islamophobia, racism at the moment? This is not the right place to talk about that. We talk about football, but it's, it's obvious. I don't have to say that. It, I, I think everybody knows that, but it's not. We, um, I think we should talk um, about that in a other circumstances when it's more serious and not now talking about football, a wonderful game and then about the problems in the world. That makes no sense. He's playing an interesting role as well. I mean, he's playing a very positive Absolutely. role in this. Yeah. We, we, we all are kind of ambassadors and sometimes we, um, we we fit to that role and sometimes not. And in the moment, obviously, Mo is a perfect ambassador for Egypt, for, for the whole Arabic world. So that's 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 really nice and I, I love that. And um, so um, I think it's a good choice. Of all of all the, the players, because the, the players in the Premier League and the, all the leagues, they voted for him, and it's a really good choice. Even when I can understand that Kevin De Bruyne might be a little bit disappointed because he played a season from another planet as well, but that's how it is sometimes. If I can ask you about one football issue or question, if you like, I mean, and, and it's obviously a particularly difficult one to, to think about here in, in Anfield, and that's the question of whether British football could think about having standing space and stadiums again. What do you think about some well, so sort I, of return? I come from a kind of where we discussed that um, pretty intense. We have still um, the opportunity for people to stand the same. By the way, they all stand here. Uh, pretty much not here maybe, but on the cop and yeah. the other side. They stand only a little bit more uncomfortable because the seat is in their back. Um, it's really, it's not about me to decide that. I, we have no problem with atmosphere. So really, Anfield is a fantastic place with all people seated around the stadium. So um, I respect history always, and uh, there were a few really um, yeah, serious um, there happened a few the serious things in the past. And so, if people feel more comfortable with that, do it. We always we did, that doesn't change the, the game, to be honest. But if people want to change it, then everybody needs to. Um, take the responsibility for it and then you have to behave then you are more we could probably bring in a few more people on, on the cop what would be nice um, but then you have to be really responsible you, you have a very special relationship with the fans you can see it when you turn to the crowd uh, when you come into the stadium can you can you talk about that? I mean, is there something special about the Liverpool yeah, crowd? They are what is it? They're absolutely special. I, I think Liverpool is a, is a really special place so uh, especially for managers since Bill Shankly, um, they had uh, obviously the, the manager is kind of uh, I don't know the English word for it. It's term is podest. I don't know. You are quite a little bit higher, so it takes longer until they want to get you out. Uh, they they want to trust them, uh, the manager. They want to um, do that, and so that's pretty special. But uh, it's I am here because of the people. I didn't know. I didn't know. I knew a little bit about the club, of course, but what I knew much more about the atmosphere. So that's how it is. I saw a few games of Liverpool. There were big games of Liverpool, of course, but what I really remember is the atmosphere. It, I, I cannot remember who scored the goal, and probably each other Liverpool supporters would do that, but I can't say who scored the goal in the 87th minute. But I know it was special. And to us, I, for sure, it's not 100%. But I have only this one life, and I want to enjoy it as well. So I enjoy that. I enjoy the atmosphere. I love it, and um, that's why I'm here. And so, it's yeah, beyond a good moment as a club. And so people obviously like the manager then as well. But they, it was the warmest welcome, probably in world football when I came in. Eh? So and so, it's still a good relationship. But uh, I think we have to do a few things that the people are then 100% happy, and we know what we have to do. People have been saying all sorts of silly, seemingly things about the next job you might go on to, um, or that you might not stay here for very long. Um, as long as some of the 
<laughs> some, some past managers. You, you can rule out going to Arsenal and things like that, can't yeah. you? Of 100%. So yeah. I, I don't, I don't move in England. That's that's uh, that's clear. 100%. So, but I, I, I don't really understand why I always have to answer this question because I didn't start talking about it. I didn't start. By the way, when my contract ends in Liverpool, I make a year break. That was they, they asked me and I spoke about it. So, but it's not, not. E I don't even think about it. But, Just, uh, but, I, but I, that's for sure. I don't move in England. Famously said the Brexit vote was a mistake, and now you supported the idea of a second referendum. Can you explain? You're thinking on this. First of all, I, I really think I'm, I'm uh, again not the right person to talk about it. But if I'm asked, I give my opinion. So that's it. I'm not the best informed person in the world. So the only thing. But people listen to you. Well, that's maybe then the problem. They listen. They listen too often to to, to the wrong people. Uh, that's why I think a few things happened. In, uh, well, that's why Trump is president of the USA. That's why things like this can happen. So there, there must be people that are better suited to the job. That's can, it's not possible that a country like this at the end. Wow. It's Donald Trump. So, and exactly the same is Brexit. It's not. It's not the solution. So, and if you, I said it before, EU is not perfect. Was not perfect. Is not perfect. Will not be perfect. But it's the best idea we had so far. So, and if the, if if you, and what I said about this is historically, it's proven that as long as many powerful countries are together, everything is fine. In a moment when we split and one goes this direction, one goes this direction. There are problems. We all learn from history that will not be that big problems in a moment. We, we talk about economy, of course, but it, it's a problem, and, and I don't, I don't understand it, and I don't, didn't understand, uh, I didn't understand Cameron when he had the idea. I didn't understand um, then the people. It's 51, 49 something that you can, such an important thing, you split the country already in a moment when you ask the question. That makes no sense as well. So, and the information was not right. Pro Brexit was pretty loud obvious on buses on everything pro uh, eu was like we don't have to because the people common sense will make the decision and at the end it happened so that's okay but i really think that that when we as long as we stick together as europeans everything can be sorted in the future jürgen Klopp, thank you very much indeed <laughs> welcome